The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. This is Ian sitting in with Toker and Minaj from Red Hen Systems. We are today going to be talking about Medium Mapper Mobile and Android app. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, if you have any questions along the way, uh, please uh, feel free to write in the little text box there, and uh, we will try to answer them. Uh, as we see them or uh, hold off until the end of the presentation um, if we think that it goes along with that section or doesn't go along with that section. But please, uh, please remember your questions or uh, get them in the text box so that we can get them answered. So the first purpose of Media Map or Mobile is to geotag um, photos and videos, and right here we're, we're going to be talking about photos. Um, kind of what we're, we're seeing here in the picture to our right is the photo that was taken uh, along with the map uh, from Google Earth below there. Um, and some of the important information that's being captured is your, your coordinates, your compass, your pitch, and your roll. Uh, which all feeds into how you can view that data later on in Google Earth, uh, either using the SPOI or um, oh shoot, the triangulation feature of the camera. Um, and just to note that MediaMap or Mobile can be used on any device that's currently running in Android OS. Uh, but here to jump into it, um, in the top there, we can see some data information. Topher, do you want to explain kind of what we're, we're looking at there? Well, it's just some uh, basic information. Um, it's a little hard to read, uh, but after you've taken the <clears throat> picture, um, you'll have uh, three, three different uh, sets of the same image. You'll have the uh, original one, then you'll have one that's uh, modified with these uh, uh, black bars on the top and bottom of the frame that detail uh, GPS information, date, time, um, any uh, sensor data, compass, uh, pitch, roll. And then that's what we're seeing down here, right, it is our X, Y, and um, pitch and yeah, roll. Um, so all of that information is captured in the footer and the header of the photo there. And right here we're seeing the, the close-up of the Google Earth image of where the photo was uh, taken from, which happens to be uh, Aspen. And here we have some video of what this process kind of looks like. So here we're taking a couple of pictures from different locations. And one more for good measure. You can never have enough photos. And this is kind of what the screen that you would open up to. And you can go to View Photos. And here we're going to go into Australia real quick. And this is a part of the SPOI function, uh, which is Spatial Perimeter of Interest. Um, it's a, a field of view projection. 
And what we're looking at is uh, this mountain way off in the distance here. And we're going to be able to um, kind of see the entire field of view that the camera can view at that given point in time. Uh, Chris, is there, um, that works off of the digital elevation model inside Google Earth, doesn't it? Uh, well, that's right. That's partially right. Uh, the digital elevation model that's used to uh, approximate the location of your target is from uh, NGA, I believe. <clears throat> but uh, once it's uh, it has uh, ac uh, access to the internet, it can uh, pull down that information and uh, do the calculation and then uh, project it onto the map um, relative to where you are. Now, uh, that can actually be reprocessed after you've taken photos. So as long as the uh, sensor data has been uh, logged, and it always is logging, um, you can do that uh, calculation. OK. Thank you. And so what we're looking at here is just zooming into the photo. You know, you can typically treat the photo as you would normally treat a photo on your phone that you had taken being able to zoom into it uh, digitally and then be able to see the approximate field of view that you would be uh, use your camera from. So that is that for the photos. And now we're going to jump into the video section of it. So um, as it kind of entails, we're going to be geotagging video from your mobile device. And right here, what we're kind of looking at, in the top right, we're looking at that compass that we had mentioned um, up above there, along with your you know, north, west, uh, your headings, and then our time. And again, we have this field of view projection of what the cameras hypothetically looking at. And so we're going to jump into, oops, the video there. So here we're going to be looking at a video of a video being geotagged. And this is, in the bottom uh, portion of the screen, we're seeing that, that spoil function of the camera. And as you can see, that the right lines are red at the current moment. That's meaning that it has horizon in view. Uh, it, that's right, Chris. Uh, yes. Okay. If the uh, <clears throat> calculated spoil is... Uh, viewing uh, anything above the horizon, then the uh, field of view lines will appear red. If it's uh, calculated as uh, viewing uh, below the horizon, that uh, will form actually a uh, green polygon uh, representing the field of view and uh, the projected corners of the video onto a map. Okay, and I, I think what we'll end up seeing here in just uh, a second is uh, an aerial view um, that will show this uh, polygon that uh, Chris has just mentioned um, projected down onto the earth. And that there you can see this uh, polygon. It, it kind of varies from a triangle to a, a trapezoid. Um, but here, here's this uh, airplane view, and we're looking down on the earth, and it's pretty accurate. Uh, representation of the space that you can view uh, being projected down onto that map. Uh, so that gives you kind of a good idea of what the power of this little program can do here. So let's jump into the next portion of it, which is how are you going to view this media? Uh, once you take in maybe pictures or video, um, is we can put it onto Google Earth via our um, post-processing software, uh, Isware, and viewing tool, or we can view it in ArcMap. So let's take a quick look at what uh, Isware and 
Google Earth looks like using the Mapper Mobile. So here we have another aircraft flying along um, and looking at some forest. And we can see that the track log is uh, being able to be accessed at any point in time. And we can get all the information regarding that point and jump the video forward uh, from that point. Um, and so as we kind of move along here, we're, do we know the interval of what the, the phone can capture GPS at? It's whatever the phone um, is able to capture, right? So the, the intervalometry of the GPS. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, typically for uh, uh, mobile devices, they'll be capturing at a rate of about one hertz, um, which for most applications uh, will be fine. Um, I mean, this one was uh, collecting data once a second and um, uh, saving that information relative to the video time code. Okay. And then the next one we're interested in looking at, the other... Uh, GIS platform is ArcMap here. And so this isn't a video, but um, what you can do in ArcMap is drop thumbnails. Well, not necessarily thumbnails, but you can drop the image into Isri ArcMap. And then uh, Manash here um, has some information regarding that process and uh, what the standard licensing um, will get you compared to some other. So some of you may know that with ArcMap you have different licenses, basic, standard, and advanced. And with that you would know that um, you're going to have different functionality with the tool um, geotag photos to points. Um, here at Red Hen we have a basic license. So when I use that tool, um, which you don't see here, when, when you use that tool, basically you have a, a thumbtack of where the photo was taken, but you, you don't have that thumbnail of the photo. But what you can do, the workaround for that, is use uh, Red Hand Systems is where to bring in your photo, save it as a KML, and then bring that into ArcMap, and this is the result where you have the thumbnail. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Minaj, for explaining how that works. And so we're going to get into sharing our images. And so the two methods uh, in which we can share our images is uh, one, the JPEG, the image. And Tofu, can that image be um, processed by Isware? on the other side and then be posted into the map when it's sent as a email? Or do we need the KML to go along with it? You don't need the KML. <clears throat> Whenever the picture is taken, it'll be uh, georeferenced and that um, attributes associated inside the JPEG file itself. So uh, most software that can read that information can uh, place it on a map. Uh, however, you get some uh, extra um, I guess you could say flavor if you have the KML. Okay. Well, that's always important stuff. Have extra flavor in there. Um, and then this is the additional file that can be sent uh, through uh, the Media Map or mobile app, which is the KML, which would actually give you uh, things like your track log. Is that right, Topher? Uh Yes, that's right. Okay. Any other um, things that come along with the, the KML as opposed to just the JPEG or the MP4 that might be sent? Well, all the uh, metadata is going to be associated in that KML, and it can also save you some extra steps if you are uh, um, needing to see the location of that photo. Um, so all you have to do is open the KML, and uh, assuming you have Google Earth or something that can read it, then it will show you where it is on the map. And KMLs are also in, or well, that's a KMZ. 
style in the picture there, but KMLs are interpretable by uh, ArcMap as well. So some of the applications that we've uh, come across uh, and uses for MediaMapper Mobile that uh, might inspire uh, you savvy GIS folk out there to uh, do such things is uh, natural resources, wildlife monitoring, vegetation management, some trail status management. Uh, if you're in the security industry, uh, you know, doing surveillance. Uh, emergency response is always an important thing to be prepared for, and this application has uh, timelessly showed that it can uh, produce that kind of material uh, readily and uh, very quickly. Um, the hospitality industry uh, likes to use this app because you know there's those important landmarks out in the forest or uh, in town that you would like to mark and have photos with. A little bit easier to explain to your your uh, guests where to go, and of course uh, sports as well, being alpine skiing, skiing, mountain biking, motocross, and uh, rally racing, all a little bit better with some map information behind it. Um, places you can download this app uh, for the cities out there, um, you can download it from Google Play. Uh, it's there for $19.95, and there is a 14-day free trial out there, so I, I urge you, if you have not already downloaded and purchased it, uh, please give it a go, and uh, please put a review up there as well. And then for you uh, military folks that got cat cards, uh, please go to the NGA Shioint App Store. Um, they also accept the like I said, the cat card or a PID, and um, it also works if you have austere user uh, permission from the U.S. Gov. So um, please uh, download it um, for the NGA folks or, um, as I said, uh, for the military folks, um, that is a free download for you. So I would encourage you taking advantage of that while that uh, is still a standing offer by the uh, very nice NGA folks there. Um, so again, available at the Google Play Store there and a free trial up. So please go check it out. And um, additional features that are currently in uh, me and Mapper Mobile that we didn't necessarily touch on in great detail, but we can, is the ability to track logs, uh, produce KMLs, uh, geotag forms, which uh, you can create uh, custom PDF forms and then write inside those uh, little grid squares um, and have places for pictures and videos to uh, pop up. Also, the ability to add geo-tagged uh, audio notes, so if there uh, isn't something that you can type out in uh, any, uh, what is, how many characters is Twitter? 220 characters? Oh, I don't know. I don't use Twitter. Yeah, I don't either. So if you can't figure it out in 220 characters, you can always uh, put it in audio notes and uh, move on. Uh, geotagging features of interest always important so you know how to get back to them or want to take a closer look. Uh, also has the ability to Bluetooth remotely to uh, other devices like a camera using a Bluetooth can, a LRF, a laser range finder. Um, what other sensors am I missing for, for uh, Bluetooth connectivity with the uh, well, if you have an external GPS, I don't know if you already mentioned that, that's uh, not. more accurate than uh, your uh, mobile device, you can connect to that. Um, also, there's a device mentioned in the VMapper mobile user guide, uh, a Texas instrument um, sensor device. So if you have uh, other sensors that you want to log, so VMapper mobile is going to log uh, any sensor it can get its hands on. So if you have a thermometer or a uh, barometer, um, just about anything that's connected will be logged and geo-referenced. Okay. Yeah. 
So those are all uh, very useful tools to have access to and be able to place on a map. Um, another useful tool is uh, if you're using an outboard camera, if you will, um, to be able to display the UTC time. So in the case that you were using Media Geotagger, which takes a non-standard collect, as uh, I kind of deem it, um, you can display the UTC time to the camera, and then you have an easy timestamp to work off of, um, which we could go into on another video. And like we had said, um, logging additional sensor data, um, being like a laser rangefinder. You can also set up the intervalometry for the camera to take photos every second or so. And then the triangulation feature uh, in which it uses a compass um, heading right to, and then that elevation model as well to produce a uh, Yeah, it's kind of a, a considered a poor man's version of a laser rangefinder. So if you don't have such a device and you only have your uh, uh, phone or tablet uh, with medium upper mobile on it, you can just take a series of photos of the same object but at different angles. And uh, post-process, you can actually uh, approximate the location of that object on a map. So pretty useful when you can't get close to something, but want to know where it is. And uh, so thank you uh, from Red Hens. Uh, thank you from myself, Ian, Topper, Deepa, Minaj, and Miss Magali. Uh, thank you for joining us today. And uh, we are going to dive into the questions here. Um, and please feel free to ask away. And we'll, we'll give it a couple minutes while you guys type them out. Uh, one thing I should mention is in, um, is where, uh, I'm currently, uh, working on developing the SPOI itself. Currently, you can only uh, view that information in Media Map or Mobile, <clears throat> but uh, here soon we'll actually enable that in ISWARE for both photos and video. That is a, a good and useful thing to know. Thank you very much, Topher, for adding that to ISWARE. Well, we'll give it another seven minutes or so. Well. People think of their questions if we didn't answer all of them in the presentation there. Any other fun facts about Media Map or Mobile that you guys can think of that we didn't touch on? I guess we didn't really touch on video that was captured by Media Map or Mobile and being able to view that in full motion video in ArcMap. Mm -hmm. um, so what we could do is um, if you guys need to have a private another demonstration on that we can we could do that but um, taking video from Media Map or Mobile we would have to convert that using Red Hand Systems uh, gem to MISBI and then we would take that output and then we'd be able to view that in ArcMap's full motion video, just like any other video. Okay. And in ArcMap, you can't start in a random place from the track log. You actually have to watch the whole video or you have to fast forward the video. It's a limitation of full motion video. It doesn't allow you to uh, click on a, a point in the track. Right. So that's, that's one of the benefits of using uh, is where inside Google Earth is that you can access that video uh, randomly and uh, jump the video ahead versus uh, either fast forward your video or uh, be subject to watching two hours of video to watch the 15 seconds of video you actually care about. Uh, <clears throat> another point to make is if you have uh, features of interest um, full motion video is not going to be able to represent those. Uh, the type of data that it's reading is uh, very uh, limited mm -hmm. in scope. Okay. And um, 
An another thing to touch on is that Media Mapper Mobile has now been updated to work with some 360 cameras, right? And do you guys remember off the top of our, your heads which couple models see, those are? Uh, I believe the LG 360 is one of them. Okay. And uh, let's see, I'm trying to remember if we need to say anything about the Samsung. Uh, I think the Samsung is up and going. I just I can't remember the model. Uh, what we'll do is we'll, um, in the post notes of this, uh, write out which uh, camera models that works with. And uh, if that's of interest um, to you guys about geotagging 360 video footage and what that kind of looks like. And I think on that note, um, we'll just wrap this up. It uh, seems like we've answered every question that you guys had inside the demonstration there. So uh, thanks for joining us and from Red Hen, bye-bye.